now with 12 games to go, six against the Yankees, six against the Rays. Everybody's back on the Blue Jay wagon as they are the number one wild card at this point, I guess, <laughs> in the American League. Joining, joined by Rich Griffin and Scott MacArthur. Uh, boys, I'd say welcome and give us a plug for your uh, own podcast. So what is the name of your podcast? Griff's going to leave it to me. I could tell by the look on your in your eyes, Griff. <laughs> no, you say it. You've got you've got the uh, you've got the, the radio guy. Script. You got the spiel. <laughs> uh, the the podcast is called Exit Philosophy uh, with Griff and Scotty Mack, and it's available wherever you get your podcasts in audio form. And we also have a YouTube page, youtubecom slash philosophy. Heavy, heavy Blue Jays talk, but also general baseball and a little bit of life as well. We record each and every Monday. Is that we where you guys uh, have uh, told us that uh, they're going to make the playoffs or not? Uh, have we already determined that? <laughs> it, it's Grip? it's a roller coaster, but uh, <laughs> we're riding it to the end. So <laughs> I, I, it is absolutely amazing um, because we're, we'll we'll talk about the last twelve games in a bit. But it is absolutely amazing what the ride has been since the end of March. I mean, expectations were so high. This, you know, this was not supposed to be a team in third position in the American League East. Uh, everybody thought that uh, if there was to be a team that was going to be at the top of the list, I assume everybody thought it would be Tampa. And then everybody thought that, they, you know, it was going to be Baltimore, Toronto, and Heaven knows what the other two behemoths were going to do in the Yankees and the Red Sox. But, Rich, you know, there's there's just still so many question marks, even if you think that, you know, they have the inside track to, to play in the playoffs, don't they? Yeah, Baltimore and Tampa are pretty much locked into the division and the first wild card spot, and, and that's up in the air, which uh, which means Tampa – has something to play for when they play the Blue Jays six of the last 12 games. So that makes it very interesting for both those teams. But like you said, John, I mean, the, this Blue Jays team before the season started with the pitching that they have, it was expected that the offense would be better and that they would carry the division and they would be at the top either in that spot now occupied by Baltimore or Tampa Bay. But it hasn't happened. And luckily for them, the pitching has been good. The starting pitching has been good. They've they've really uh, deepened the the bullpen and made it like a four inning uh, effective bullpen, which you're going to need in the postseason. Which these days, with guys high fiving after five inning starts, you really need during the regular season. But it has been a disappointing year for the Jays thus far. But their fate is in their own hands and that's in sports that's what we like to say scotty why can they make it why won't they make it give me give me both sides of that well i th i think it's likely they do make it um and and i say this having watched them for five and a half months fully aware that they could crater over the next two weeks against the yankees and rays and if that happens i presume that it will be the offense's fault <laughs> because that has been the issue with this team. But with Seattle and Texas still due to play each other uh, a couple of series here between now and the end of the year, as long as the Blue Jays win a reasonable portion of their remaining games, they will gain enough ground or remain ahead of one of those two Mariners or Rangers teams to get in. I, I don't know if they'll be the, the second wild card or the third and final wild card. And they will play on the road. And it would be at Baltimore, Tampa Bay, or Minnesota, depending on where they slot in the second or third wild card. Why won't they make it, Darren? If, if, if they don't make it, it's because they spent the final two weeks looking too much like how they looked for a lot of the first five and a half months. And that is a team that doesn't hit, and that is a team that plays extremely poorly within its own division. Now, the Yankees team that handled them back in May is not the Yankees team now. There are a lot of young players in that Yankees lineup. There are some injuries. So that's why I am assuming, perhaps erroneously, that the Jays will fare much better in the Bronx this week and at home against the Yankees 
next week. Um, so six, I do so think they're going to get in. Scotty? Six Pardon and six. Will, will six and six get them in? Uh, no. Eight, eight, and four would get them to ninety-one wins. And Griff and I are of the opinion that it's got to look ninety-one and seventy-one. Um, well, and, and so, so you got to go eight and four in in my opinion to to be safe. Six and six might, but eight and four will. In fact, Scotty, the magic number against all three of those AL West teams for the Blue Jays is twelve. So if they go eight and four, and there's two teams playing seven times that are in that grouping, then one of those teams has to lose four games. So if they lose four games and the Jays win eight games, ninety one becomes that number, and they're in. So basically, they got to go eight and four. And I texted Pete Walker this morning so he could get some sleep the rest of the way after a loss. And uh, and yeah, so it definitely is in their own hands. Uh, John, to your point, six and six would still allow them an, a, a good opportunity because uh, the team that lost those four games against the Mariners and the Rangers would have to win the rest of their schedule to prevent the Jays at six and six from getting in. So, so like for some crazy reason, they're right in the mix after being swept at home by the Rangers and ignominiously being uh, dumped from the wild card mix. And now they're back. You know, that 91 wins, gosh, that that's a haunting number. When you think that the last two years, what were they? 91 wins or 92 wins? 91 and 92. So, so, yeah. so, so, so where, I mean, this team was supposed to grow and build upon those last two years. And I, th I would assume, uh, Scotty, that is the biggest frustration, that they haven't been able to grow past where they were, just out of the playoffs last year and being swept in the wild card at home, or two years ago, and then being swept at home in the wild card last year. Yeah, and uh, jo John, I'll just circle back to how you introduced the entire segment, and you did it quite <laughs> rightly, but it made me smirk because you called it what we all call it, which is a playoff race. This doesn't feel like a race unless it's some kind of four by 100 where the Blue Jays are like, here, Texas, have the baton. <laughs> and then Texas is like, nah, nah, we're good. You have it back. It it feels more like a, a, a tortoise trot than it than it does a playoff race but but to your point they made some significant changes to their team last off season and it was centered on run prevention and without question the outfield defense has vastly vastly improved this year it's inarguable kevin kiermeyer coming off a hip surgery still has it defensively in center field and Dalton Varsho is a better left fielder than anybody particularly Lourdes Gurriel Jr. that they had manning the position last year there has been a consequence to that though which is Dalton Varsho who is still a young player at 26 years old has not taken the next step offensively he came to the Blue Jays as a low on base high slugging percentage against right-handed pitchers. He's a left-handed hitter, so the favorable matchup. He came as a low on base, high slugging percentage guy. And I think when we looked at his OPS against right-handed pitchers, if we didn't look further and break down the OBP and the slugging percentages, we might have thought, well, this guy, this guy's going to be on base 35, 36% of the time against the predominant hand, the right hand, the right-handed pitchers. And it just hasn't happened. He needs to continue to progress. He needs to take another step offensively next year for this trade to look better. Um, but they have succeeded in the run prevention element. They have done so at the expense of some offense, which when compounded with Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s very underwhelming season has led to a lot of the offensive frustration that we've witnessed since the start of April. John, the uh, one thing to consider, and Darren, you would uh, understand this part of the co competitive nature of Major League Baseball compared to uh, the NBA and compared to the NHL, where the haves are going to beat the have-nots 90% of the time, when in fact, 
Uh, in baseball, you've got four teams above the 600 win percentage, four teams below 400, and the rest are all grouped in the middle there. And, and when they expanded to three wildcard teams, all of a sudden, more teams stay in the race. It used to be that a team with 97 wins might not even be a wild card when it was right. only one wild card. Uh, I, I remember the Giants had 100 and didn't make the playoffs. 100 wins didn't make the playoffs. But now there's a, a restriction in September. They went from allowing 40 men on the roster. You could only add two. So now there's 28 maximum on the roster. Uh, there's every team above 500 on September 1st believes that they can still earn a wild card berth. So you've got more teams competitive in the final month. And there used to be a separation in September with teams playing youngsters because they knew they were out of it. There was only one wild card. And now you go into it and and Texas Rangers sweep the Jays in Toronto and then they go to Cleveland and Cleveland has a pretty good team. They've got a pretty good team. And, and when you've got a five man rotation, it's like in the NHL, if you had a different goaltender for five straight days, so a different guy every night, and that would make a huge difference. So the pitching matchup in Cleveland They've got young starters trying to prove themselves. They've got a, a lineup that can produce runs, especially at home. And you saw what happened. So mm -hmm. I think that the 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 target win total uh, can no longer be considered mid nineties, high nineties for wild card. It's got to be low nineties, ninety, ninety one, ninety two, and that's what the Jays are aiming for.